Hello everybody, it's Mr. D at In The Middle with Mr. D1 at Blogspot. Back to school, we'll have to say that in summer, right? Today we're gonna talk about what do you mean I can't smile before Christmas because that was something I heard a lot and I'm gonna talk about that um, in a few minutes but I just wanna mention that uh, tomorrow is the final uh, session in this series that I'm doing. Um, it'll be on sight singing strategies starting at nine. Um, we'll talk a lot about some of the things that are in S cubed. And then I'll probably announce some more uh, for after July 4th, um, kind of uh, planning as we go here in the summer, keeping it uh, easy. But if you want to make sure you don't miss those, then I want you to come uh, make sure you're on my email list at in the middle with Mr. D1, uh, sorry, in the middle with Mr. D at gmail.com. And uh, please say hello and interact as you want and ask questions. Uh, so here we go. And at the end, remember, I will announce um, a free lesson, and then I have some discounts as well. Hello, Donna. You are here every day. Appreciate you. Um, so um, when I first started teaching, I looked 12, and um, I was in a middle school, and I heard several times, as thanks for the hearts, um, they um, said to me, uh, don't smile before Christmas. You know, just make sure you don't smile. And that just seemed weird to me. It's not my personality. It does not work for me, but I did it. And um, I just, I, I was really stern with the kids. And I remember um, about two months in, and this is a true story, um, I had made the kids so angry with me that, um, and this is, I can't even believe I'm gonna say this out loud. The child, a child, pooped outside my door on a Friday and left it there and I found it on a Monday. Now we didn't have cameras back then, but I knew that I had to change something. Um, I had that Friday just, I was impatient and uh, this child had, I, I really just pushed the kid too much against the wall. It was not a good situation. And she ended up getting in a fight with another kid and then I wrote the kids up and then that was her payback. So I knew something had to change. So I remember when Christmas break, hello, uh, Jewel, thanks for coming. I remember when Christmas break came, I uh, went home and I thought I've either got to stop doing teaching altogether or I've got to figure this out. So when I came back in, in January, I changed my approach and I just was more like myself, which you know, you, you have to do that for yourself um, as well. You have to find your way, not my way. But I, I'm gonna share with you some of the things that kind of worked for me um, and I'm gonna kind of ch cheat here with my notes. Um, the first thing that I think is so important at the beginning of the school year is that you establish structure, laughter, relationships, and rapport. You need all of those things with the kids early okay so I'm going to share some of the things that are specific and one of the things I want you to think about is your classroom setup right the structure piece hello um, French I'm reading it and I it looks like M-A-T-Y hello and thanks for joining your classroom setup um, needs to be clear for the kids you know on the beginning of school but how does it flow Will they um, easily get to their chairs? If you have materials that they need to get, will they be easy to find? If you want them to immediately sit down and start something, is it clear? Um, you know, because if you don't set those processes up well, the flow of your room, you're gonna end up uh, creating problems you don't really need. Um, uh, I have, uh, I've made sure that I set up seating charts at the beginning. Hello again, Jules, it looks like you're coming and going. Um, the uh, seating charts I do, I've mentioned in the previous Periscope, um, I put stickers on every single chair with the names of the kids um, from my role before the first day of school so that they walk in, I put instructions on that are clear to the kids. Hello, Ward, thanks for coming. I think it's Glenda, but thank you. Um, I put uh, the stickers on there so that they know exactly where to go. These are things that you, you need to do and you need to tell them what you want them to do clearly as they enter your room. I mean, think about a sixth grader. They, um, they're nervous and scared. This is a huge school um, and they walk into your classroom and, and they're worried about everything. You, all the new kids, um, what you want them to do, what your expectations are of them. And if they feel that you've created a good structure for them when, when you walk in and that you are warm to them, you are going to comfort them in ways that uh, they will not remember. They, uh, I mean, they, they will always remember from you. And on the first day, when they walk into my room, I make sure that I smile at them um, that very, very first day. I mean, it's key. Um, sometimes when kids um, are insecure, especially the younger ones, they raise their hands and ask tons of questions. And that frustrates us. And if you experience that, you can do some hearts. I don't know if anybody out there has. I certainly have. 
Um, thank you. It's terrible, especially sixth graders. They're like, hey, you know, they're, you know, what do we do next, and what's happening? Um, and and it's all because we aren't being as clear as we could be with them. Um, and we have to be patient. We have to learn. We have to learn to anticipate those questions so that we don't get frustrated. Because when they feel that frustration, um, that's when they think we don't like them, and when they think we don't like them. Um, that they, they fight against us and we set up this whole atmosphere which is what I did in my first year teaching was terrible I mean I fought like crazy I remember the first holiday concert thanks for joining Eam um, on the first holiday concert um, we were I was giving announcements to the kids about where to go and what to do and um, I remember the kids disrespected me so much and this was my own fault I had created it that they um, one child yelled across the room to another child while I was talking. She said, are you coming to the concert, which is required? And the other child said, I don't know, are you coming? All within earshot of me. And this is because I had created an environment. I know, isn't that funny? It's, it's, it's terrible. I can't even believe I made it. Um, and I didn't say a word. I was so weak and un... Um, I was just not good and, uh, at what I was doing. I didn't know how to relate to the kids. And so that's why after Christmas I changed it. And so I know if you're experiencing that in your classroom, it, it, this is, um, oh wow, <laughs> wow. Um, how did you patch your relationship with the kids who already didn't like you? Hmm. Um, I, I don't know that I did. I did it, uh, I did it for some kids, I think. Um, I went in, uh, I just, you know, I just tried to listen better. I tried to, um, uh, be nicer when I delivered instructions. Um, I, I think by the end of the year, like I, I mean, this was a long time ago because I'm really old. I'm 52, and I started in 1989. Some of those children now from that first year were um, are my friends on Facebook, and they're like, you know, they're really they're in their 40s or whatever, and they have lives. And so some of them will say to me, you know, you were a very good teacher. I'm like, I was terrible that first year. But um, they must only remember the second half because the first half was, it was brutal. I, I, I um, did not set up a good situation. Um, regarding, you know, I think of the children, I say this often, I said it, I think I said it yesterday, with your structure in your classroom, if you don't create that right, the flow and things, the, um, the kids, especially sixth graders, will move with each other. So if, if they, one of them goes in the wrong direction because you haven't been clear, they all go. And if you've experienced that, hearts are great. Um, and they all go and then all of a sudden they're doing something they're not even supposed to do. I know, right? And, um, and you're like, what happened? And that was my fault. I, I wasn't clear. I did not set up that structure. So the chaos that ensues frustrates us and that's not good, right? So on the first day of school, the kids, uh, my, my cooperating teacher taught me this. They see right through us. They can tell, uh, they know so much about us, even through their nerves, uh, they sit and observe. Um, they, know, they know if we like what we're doing, they know if we are good at what we're doing, very, very quickly. Uh, middle school children have not been taught to put the blinders on yet. Uh, and uh, I think by high school, they start to do the whole benefit of the doubt thing. I don't know, it, that's just my experience, it seems. Um, that tone that you set that at the beginning is just critical. Um, I'm gonna check my notes here, make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Um, when you give them good, that good structure, their independence allows you to observe them, and that's, that's a good thing to do on the first day. So I try to set up my classroom and my first day so that I get the chance to observe who can follow directions well because my instructions have been good. And then I mentioned earlier the four things you want to do are structure. I think one of them was fun and laughter. Um, and I love a cup up game. And so I, I'm going to uh, describe it a little bit to you. And um, in my, on some days, it depends on the, how, the length of the class. On the first day of school, sometimes I do, uh, I most often do my S cubed game, Forbidden Pattern. Uh, if I don't get to cup up, I do it on the second or third day. But um, anyway, I have. Um, I used to use either plastic or styrofoam. I uh, put them in groups of like six-ish uh, or seven, depending on the size of the class. Uh, the kids hit the cup in the air, you know, and they hit it to another child. Um, and they're not allowed to ever hit it two times in a row. So like I can't go one, two, three, that. I have to go one and then I hope the other child hits the cup um, that's next to me or someone in the circle. And then I can hit it again. 
And um, so our goal is to get to 20. And so uh, we just do it, and then if it hits the ground, then we have to start over at number one. And all the children have to count one until 20 out loud together as a team. So this is a fun little game that I use that first day. Um, they end up having a great time. They don't know each other. And um, they, they laugh, and it's just great. And then at the end of the game, you get to uh, ask some questions, and you say things like, let me check my notes here. Um, uh, let me see. What is, what is the Cup Up game really about, and how does it apply to this class? And, of course, the answer is teamwork. Um, and while you play the game, what did you notice about the other people around you? And they'll say things like, some were afraid uh, to hit the cup, which is true. We had to start over a bunch of times because some people wanted to do it themselves, all of, you know, and use follow up. Uh, we, I use follow up questions to dig deeper. Like, what does that mean? And how did that make you feel? When children want to hog the cup and all this kind of thing. Um, and, you know, the best part again is the laughter and the teamwork that's created. And I love watching them. Uh, ask questions like, as you play the game, I noticed that many of you changed your technique. Why did you do that? Like sometimes I'll notice the kids get on the floor and, um, and they think that if they're on the floor, they can keep a, their cup from hitting the floor. Um, I ask them to describe uh, the things that worked about their techniques and things that didn't work. And all of this is applicable to singing. Um, every bit of it, you know, and so I sort of turn the corner and start talking about that. Um, now, the team that gets to 20 first, I ask them how that feels. I tell them to yell it out when they get to 20, and I, you know, it's fun. And they all get starbursts, so that reward is fun. That structure and that fun that you create, that teamwork, it will serve you well. Um, and then, on, I, I usually play a second game afterwards. Hello, Hark, thanks for joining. And on the second game, um, I, I tell them to go as high as they can, and I time it. Um, thanks for the hearts. Um, can I tell them to time it? Well, I time it for three minutes, and then I call time, and I say, how far did each team get? And they um, usually, you know, somebody will get to 40 or something, and then they get a starburst, all of that team. Um, so these, this is a, the way I establish the fun in my classroom. Um, and the philosophy behind that game is to get the kids to, to laugh and to connect and to have fun. Um, together and for you to get to watch them and to uh, and to create you know some rapport with the kids because that was one of the other things I mentioned at the beginning that's really really key um, and I also sometimes see some children cheating um, and I have a way to address that that I'm going to share with you in a little bit um, and that's something we have to to address for sure but we have to address it carefully they are middle school children and um, you are going to see those things um, so. Uh, later in the beginning of the year, I, um, of course, cover expectations, um, and my syllabus is a really key component. I appreciate those hearts. Um, the syllabus is something, what, what I learned early on in my teaching career not to do is to spend that first day going over the rules. I think that's a terrible idea. It's boring, and the children, you know, that, that is just going to send them, especially singing children, they're going to be like, this class is going to be terrible. You know, it's going to be a bore. Um, and so that's why it's so important to create that structure the first day um, and do the things that you uh, get to the fun part and create some rapport. The first, second, maybe the third day, you start to do the rules and the expectations. And you only spend 10 to 15 minutes uh, a day in that. Don't do it all at once. I mean, the kids will just, they tune out. And if you've had that experience, give some hearts for sure. They just go, oh my God, this is lasting forever, right? And you, you can really just steal their spirits when you talk too long. So 15 minutes of rules in those first weeks or so is okay. And sometimes it takes me a week to get through the syllabus. Um, so uh, during that first week, I establish the routines um, with, uh, you know, just with instructions that are very clear, uh, either on my Promethean board or on a, a whiteboard as they enter the room, or I try to just make sure that it's very clear. So maybe break down each section of the handbook that first week. Yes, that's what I do. I definitely do not go through the whole thing. And if you do it the first day, they're going to die inside. Seriously. Uh, yeah. Thanks for those hearts. Um, so I cover those expectations as we go for about a week, um, and, and I, like my daily lesson plan for about the first week or two is review in the first five minutes. I cover some more ex classroom expectations for 10 or 15 minutes, not necessarily in this order. Um, I do some subject content for about 10 or 15 minutes, 
and always include something fun if I can, you know, can figure out something to do that is fun where we can laugh and maybe a name game or, you know, whatever, things of that nature. Um, so I, today, as I wrap this up, what I'm going to offer to everybody, oh, if you have questions, go. Do you have sewn thing you always do at the bell to focus the kids? Uh, something. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, yes. And um, my... In my S-Cube sightseeing program, um, that is how I start my normal class period. Once I get my routines sort of established in the first week, they, they know that they walk into my room. I don't wait for bells. In fact, my school doesn't even have bells. Um, they walk into my room. I establish this routine myself in the first week, and they look at the Promethean board, and there is an activity there that they have to do, and they write down, um, they answer the questions that are on the board. I give stickers to the kids, um, who are doing that um, and, and establishing that routine quickly. And after they get three stickers, they get a starburst. There's, there's got to be reward for those children. These are middle school kids, and they've got to be reward. Do you launch into repertoire or do rounds and other songs first, those first two weeks? In the first two weeks, I do, and thanks for the question, Hark, I'm trying out some new contact lenses. So, <laughs> um, I do... Um, um, I, what I do in the first two weeks with singing is I do my Forbidden Pattern game, uh, from SQ, and I do rounds, very easy rounds. Um, so, what you love, Donna? Get more specific so I know. <laughs> um, I appreciate that comment, though. Um, I, um, yeah, so today, let's get into what is free in my TPT store for you. Um, it is my lesson called, What Do You Mean I Can't Smile Before Christmas? Um, so if you go Music in the Middle with Mr. D and you type in TPT, just dig through my store. I think it's under Other Lessons in the bundles, and you can download that for free. Stickers and Starburst idea, yeah, that's good. They need it. They need it. Listen, they love those stickers. Even the eighth graders love them. They love them. And I, and they're cute. I get little funny ones sometimes, and, and I get to make a joke about it, and it's that one-on-one -on -one contact that they love. They love just, you know, you coming to them and saying, you know, acknowledging that they've got it. Um, okay, my rounds, I use a, oh, it's a purple, it's like a fuchsia round book. I use a few different ones. Gosh, I wish I could be prepared for that question. I got it from Pepper Music. Um, it's very, oh, I'll, I'll try to, you know what, if you email me in the middle of Mr. D at gmail.com, I will send it to you. Um, I get my stickers on Amazon. Um, I um, just type in student stickers and I get a variety of them. And I've gone to educational stores before, but Amazon is everything. I love it. Uh, and if y'all love it, give some hearts. But I love it. It's easy. It comes to your door. So I get, um, I get the stickers from there and I use uh, so many. Yes, 150 round books. Thank you. It is the 150 round books. Uh, and I use another one too, but I like that one the best. And then I also like, um, Rollo Dilworth's warm-ups, by the way, which I'll talk about another day. They're fun for middle school. Um, there's a specific book. Uh, anyway, so what do you mean I can't smile for Christmas? It's free in my TPT store. Go get it. Please tell your peers who are not on this Periscope and, um, and have them go grab it. It'll be free until noon today, Eastern Time. Um, and I'm also a still the TES store, Music in the Middle of Mr. D. Uh, my middle school new course teacher starter pack is still $19, and it's going to stay that way. It's got this lesson in it. It's got Keep Your Eyes on Me in it. It's got some S-Cubed lessons in it for people who haven't started S-Cubed and haven't purchased S-Cubed. $19. It's a steal. Get you started. And then that one is, is going to go past noon today for sure. I think it's for another week or so. And then... Um, Le level two is still t um, for until noon today. I made it twenty-seven dollars again this morning. Level two for all of you who are using S cubed. If you're here today and you weren't here yesterday, twenty-seven dollars is cheap. And it's normally ninety-nine, so that's for until noon today. And S cubed, the original series, will also be ninety-nine. I made it ninety-nine right before this periscope. It will stay that way until noon today. Um, and then there is also a ten percent sale on everything else in that store. Still, I think like, today is the last day for that. Uh, and then tomorrow, I plan to um, talk about some S-Cube things. So if you know some people that um, haven't done it, that want to get in there, or maybe you have some questions and you're using it, you can ask all kinds of questions about it. Sites hanging strategies, all right? So go grab What Do You Mean? I Can't Smile Before Christmas, and hopefully I'll see some of you tomorrow. And thank you very much for joining. Take care.